Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So with all the new people in the rooming house, I felt like it was high time that I go ahead and complete this bed that I got in the bundle of broken dollhouse furniture for $15. Now, I will leave a link in the description for when I got this broken bundle and a link for when I repaired this bed. So today I'm going to complete it. Now, dolls, my original design was to leave it the natural brown color and add the filigree pieces and a little bit of gold rub and buff. And then I got an idea, which is always when all the problems start. <laughs> I suddenly decided to paint it. In my mind, I wanted it to be an antique pink, blush, dusty rose, lavender, brown, dusty rose pink mauve. In my imagination, they're all the same color, but they're actually not the same color. And since I didn't have that color already made up, I had to mix my own. So I used some of my basic understanding of color theory, and I mixed and blended the colors together until I came up with the color that I thought was the color I wanted. And when I got done mixing, things started to look kind of salmon. I think I added too much yellow. And although I could clearly see it was way off from my original sample color, I forged ahead anyway, but I thought it would look better after I got it on the bed. So after adding a layer of crackle medium, I went on to add the salmon-y looking pink orange color to the bed. And I thought I would like it after it dried. And I really didn't. It looked super orange and kind of weird. And on top of all of that, the glue between the join of the slat and the footboard disconnected. Now those of you who've been following me know that I've really been working hard and earnestly trying to be more sparing with my glue use but at this point I was having flashbacks of glue failure from my childhood and I just began to squeeze the glue straight from the bottle. I totally defaulted to my former ways but after I stuck the pieces back together and I saw the glue oozing excessively it reminded me of my recovery and my progress and as I gently cleaned off the dripping glue I reminded myself that one relapse does not mean failure. So now after the joint was solid I went on to add a little rub and buff to the filigree parts and I thought that I would like it better but I realized I really didn't no matter what I did any which way I turned the bed, I really didn't like the color. And I realized that even though I like a really cozy, warm look, I'm really more attracted to cool colors. So I went back to the drawing board and mixed some more colors together to make a new custom color. And I left out the yellow, added more pink and some brown. And dolls, this is what I got. So I gave my little orange bed a couple coats of my new color. And with the first swipe of my paintbrush, I knew I had made the right decision. I really like the color and now I feel inspired to finish the bed. So this is to encourage you to work on your project until you like it, until you're satisfied, until you really feel inspired to move forward. Don't stop at one point and then create something you're just totally dissatisfied with. It doesn't do you any good to finish it and you hate it. Work on it until you're happy with it. Even if that means staining it, adding crackle, and painting it twice. Two different custom colors. <laughs> so after I had coated the bed with two nice coats of the beautiful mauve color that I created, I added a little bit of my antique gold rub and buff to the filigree pieces and allowed it to dry. After I changed the color of the bed, I was totally inspired and I was able to easily gather together the fabrics that I wanted to use for the bedding. Now I'm going to use a different treatment for the bed to create the shape. Now you dolls know I love my water and glue solution and in a previous video I used mesh wire but today I'm going to use heavy duty aluminum foil and I found that this was a really really great option so I doubled up the layer of the aluminum foil to the size of the piece of fabric I was going to use and I have a top and a bottom because I'm going to sandwich the aluminum foil between the fabrics but what I did was I made the edges a little bit heavier and thicker because I knew those were the parts of the bed I would want to manipulate the most. So I wanted them to be as firm and as strong as possible. So they would be thick enough to withstand multiple changes and adjustments to the linens on the bed. So when I got all my edges folded down to the size that it would fit inside my fabric after I closed up the seams, I went on to add my tacky glue to make a really thin shallow hem all the way around my blanket. You may call it a comforter. I didn't quilt it because I didn't want to pierce 
the aluminum foil. I just laid two pieces of fabric together and spread my glue out thin so that it would make a nice neat even bond. Now I did use my clover iron to help accelerate the glue drying process and I just kind of ran it across the top of the glue and it really helps be careful with it. Always be mindful of where your fingers are. In this frame you see me ironing on top of a homemade ironing board I use on my table. Now after I went around three sides of the little blanket, I left the one side open because I have to do a special treatment on that fourth side. Now this design for the bedspread is by no means a new concept. This is just the first time I've done a bedspread like this on my channel. This is the first dollhouse bed that had the high bed post, which would require accommodation for a split hem in the bedspread. Now here I am just using my precision tweezers to help pull my corners all the way out because I want the full extension of my bedspread to be available to fit the aluminum foil inside. Now make sure always when you're making a blanket for your bed, make sure you make your fabric long enough that you'll have a ample drop on all sides of the bed and so you'll have enough to fold back at the top or even tuck pillows under. Now this is the mattress that I made in a previous video. I will leave a link in the description for that. So now I'm just kind of fitting it on the bed with the mattress to determine where I'm going to need to split the end of the bed spread to make it fit around my bed post. So I've determined it's going to be right around in that area. Now you dolls know I'm working with measuring. I'm really historically have not been a person who measures a lot. I do a lot of eyeballing and this would be the case here. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, definitely measure so you'll have an accurate distance between the two areas to make sure that your bedspread ends up even. Now, dolls, at this point, I've split both sides with my scissors right near the bed post where it's going to open so that it'll lay nicely um, behind the mattress, behind the footboard. You can see now that the fabric is split so those ends will be able to lay down and tuck behind the footboard. And here I'm just showing you the opening where I'm going to tuck my aluminum foil. Now from this angle you can clearly see where I made my splits. I haven't finished them or hemmed them. I want to get my aluminum foil fitted inside first before I begin to create my hem and finish off the seams around the split. Now I'm pushing it all the way to the end and this is another reason why I had to make sure I pulled those corners out so I could get a full extension for the aluminum foil and you see I'm just pushing it out a little bit more because I want it all the way in the corners. Now if after you fit your aluminum foil in between your two pieces of fabric and it's a little bit long don't worry about cutting it just fold it over a little bit so that there's a little small hem where you can turn in your seams. You don't need to cut it because if those little edges are a little bit firmer, I believe the additional thickness or firmness will make them more durable in the end. When you're ready to shape your blanket. Now at this point, I'm just ironing down my seams before I go forward. I just want everything to be flat and smooth. I don't want anything to be bunched up. So I did go along the edge of that with my clover iron just to make sure those seams were nice and flat and that they were secure. Now at this point I began to split my aluminum foil right below where I made the split in the fabric. After I split the foil I folded it on top of itself to leave a little tiny trench in between the split so that I would have room to turn my hem. Now here's the angle of me cutting that other side splitting it right under where the fabric is and don't worry about it being perfect you just can fold over the aluminum foil where you need to to make it line up after you've created an allowance with the aluminum foil between your two pieces of fabric now it's time to just fold it over and create a really shallow thin hem all the way around the perimeter of the fabric now i like to do the split last so I do the hem on the edge of the perimeter of the blanket. So I'm just adding glue here so I can encase the whole thing in. So watch how I do this fold. So I turned it under just barely so that it would match the other side. I flipped it over and did the exact same thing to the other side. 
And here I am adding glue to the opposite side as well and folding it just so that it will encase the aluminum foil and match the piece of fabric that's below. Now you want to repeat this process on both sides and then close it off and then you want to start to work on the corners doing the exact same thing. Spreading your glue as thin as possible so that it'll be nice and neat with no stains. And when you're done, both of your corners should look like this. I finally used my clover iron to make sure those hems were nice and sealed really, really well and they were firm. I turned the end on the other corner and did the exact same thing. Now that the center and both of the corners are done, I can go ahead and turn in the split. Now before I begin to hem the inside of the split, I made a quick snip on the fabric. So the fabric will release just enough to turn those edges all the way around the entire opening. Now the purpose of the little snip is to release the fabric so you'll be able to turn your hem without resistance because you don't want to pull around the hem of the slit. Now dolls, this is definitely a part you're going to need to take your time. Gently turn it around a really thin shallow hem. Make sure it's laying down smooth and curve it little by little until you've gone all the way around the opening. You see I'm cutting like a little niche in there just to release the fabric enough for me to turn it. And as you work your way all the way around, it should look something like this when you're done. And I'm just pressing it down to make sure all the seams are bonded and solid. Now let's check and see if my unorthodox measuring technique actually worked. There's my mattress I made with a shirt sleeve and we're tucking my new bedspread behind the mattress in between the mattress and the footboard and it fits nice and neat. I'm pulling it all the way through and it lines up really nicely with the bed post. I think that worked well. Now let's see how well the aluminum foil works. So I'm just kind of pressing it, manipulating it around. And even though I really like the wire, I do like the feel of this heavy duty aluminum foil because although it's rigid, it's a little bit softer. You don't have to press as hard. Now the control is not as firm as the wire, but it definitely is worth using as an option. Now I was really tickled by how neatly it fit around the bed post and how everything drapes so smoothly. And dolls, at this point, I'm just playing to see how much I can manipulate the, the blanket with the aluminum foil on the inside. And it was really pliable. It was easy to adjust. I felt like I was able to make realistic looking drapes around the edges, especially up around the top where you would have the pillows where people would get in and out. So this is definitely an option that would be great if you want to put your dolls in and out of bed or just to create a messy bed for your dollhouse scene. I think the aluminum foil makes very realistic, soft, gentle folds and drapes in the fabric. Very easy to manipulate. Definitely a great option that I will be using again and again because I really, really like the ease of it. And it was definitely less messy than the water and glue, and it was softer than the mesh wire. So let me just see what it'll do with a more aggressive, messy look. So I'm going to really work with it and bend back the blankets to see what it'll do. Kind of all scrunched up and flip it back. I think that looks good. Folded it here. Did the same thing, but it still went back really, really easily. And let's see, just folding it all the way back, folding it down. That looks great. I really, really like this. And I really want you dolls to see how neatly everything fit around the footboard and behind the rail on the footboard where everything lays really, really neatly. See there? So let's move on to the finishing touches, which you know I really love to do dolls. So I'm making a couple pillowcases. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about doing this because I did make pillows and pillowcases in several other bedding videos. But I just had to use this piece of fabric because this was something that came in the bundle with all my beautiful photographs and pictures. And I will leave a link in the description for that video. 
Now, as I was doing my finishing touches, I did add additional rub and buff to my little filigree pieces to really make them stand out a little bit more. And I did kind of drag it across parts of the bed as well to kind of streak it up a little bit more to maybe make it look as though part of the finish had worn off and that those filigree pieces were more metallic rather than wood. In addition to smearing the gold rub and buff on the surface of the bed, I did come back over it with a little bit of alcohol and acrylic paint wash just to allow it to drip and drag into the filigree pieces to really make the shadows stand out so you could see more detail. And I did allow some of it to streak across some of the other parts of the bed as well just to add a little bit more wear and age to it. Not necessarily to make it look dirty, but just worn. Now it's time for me to add my lace. I really wanted it to have a bed skirt, but I didn't want to do anything super fancy, so I just used a really pretty piece of lace because I wanted to keep the bed looking pretty simple and rather modest, but I just wanted it to be something really, really subtle running along the edge of the blanket just peeking out a little bit and i think it really complements the little filigree pieces right there along that edge yeah i like that now that my pillowcases are all dry i'm just pulling my corners out now although i've made pillowcases so many times it's something about this fabric looks oddly familiar. It literally looks like some pillowcases my great-grandmother had when I was a little girl. Something about that rose pattern. <laughs> so dolls, this is another instance where I just want to encourage you not to be too set on what your design or idea for a particular project is. As it moves along, sometimes it evolves into something different than what you originally thought. And a lot of times it'll turn out better than what you imagined. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today and you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.